Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episodic adventure of Point of View. With me, Mal. And as you see, we got some advertisements. We finally got some fucking advertisements to showcase. Get the official. This p- podcast is, b- is sponsored by fucking Coliseum. <laughs> By by Coliseum, the the official CR shoes WVGU, A, and etc. 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 Also the EFIT Hub. I love the EFIT Hub. Good good people. But like today, mm, today we are going to literally talk about some topics this might be a quick podcast because i gotta go back doing my homework for community college art classes homework i don't know why art classes have homework that is just fucking draw but at the same time you got to be like bruh consistent you son of a bitch (laughs) anyways In T ways, we're going to be talking about, well, anything. Let's talk about the NWA. The NWA, I love the NWA. I can't remember for the next episode. I don't know when it comes on. Tuesday Power, I don't know. Wednesday Power, I don't know. But when they put up an episode, and I'm watching that joint, ASAP Rocky. The Power... You know, it's just it's just so good. Like the studio audience, all that stuff, you know, it's 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 so so well done. I I love it. I love it. So, Cedric. Oh god, I think I'm too loud. Whoever's listening to whoever listening to this podcast, if you're making a studio effect, please do that. Please, pretty please. Because I would love to, to watch it and love to, you know, do whatever. I could be your commentator, for crying out loud. If you need a commentator, just let me know. I, well, I don't know about if I can be able to be free. I, 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 you you got to work on my schedule, okay? I got classes Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Tuesday, 6 to 9. 69, Thursday, 6, 9, Saturday, 8 to 3, so work on my schedule, all that stuff, and also also with family, all that stuff, so I would try my best to help y'all out with anything y'all need. So, I'm going to respond to a video by Cedric, or CR, about Fire Pro being selfish not the um developers but more like the community of them being selfish i agree with everything he says i really do agree with it. i really do agree with everything he says because as a community communities in general are selfish such as the anime community i think i don't really the furry community I say fur community because some because they sometimes could be dicks, especially when it comes down to paid stuff such as making fur suits, art, all that crap. You know, people are selfish. They up the prices, and sometimes you they steal your money. Anyways, um, basically. I agree with everything he says. The community is selfish because we are because they're a bunch of dicks and all that shit. Watch my EFA, but I don't watch your EFA because fuck you. That's why. And I'm looking at the screen right now. Life getting another life, a lot another life support. I'm watching CR Road right now, but I want to record this podcast because I need to get up because I need to get because I need to get an episode out there. And I was feeling a little bit podcasty, so I want to make an episode, because why not? Um, what else? He claims that 
now people's not helping each other out. Well, I'm kind of like abbreviating what he's saying because again, my memory is faulty. I will watch it again. And then I will give you better better input, but it's, but but for right now I'm doing one take only. But the video is pretty well done. Like it's really well done. Like his points are completely reasonable, and I shared it with the um the critical club Discord because I feel as though they need to see the video. They really do need to see the video. Because it's not just a critical club. It's with all communities. Like, all communities. What I mean by all communities, I I mean it. The call community is selfish. The fire pro community is selfish. Any E-Fed community. Apparently, there's a, a board E-Feds. Like, role-playing E-Feds. They are selfish. Well, I don't know about the board effects because they more of, you got to read this, man. So, I don't know if they're actually fully selfish or if they just, I don't know, themselves. They seem chill. But, at the end of the, but at the, end of the day, it's like, you got to help each other out. You got to help each other out. You got to make each other better in production and in anything. Like, I never had anybody help me out with my videos. Well, one of them did. I'm not going to say he did something bad, but he did something, like, he literally trying to help me out, just trying to hook me up with, with something. I'm not going to say the name, but he, but all I, but but all I got to say is that he trying to hook me up with, a, with, like, better production, all that stuff, to get rid of the watermarks and everything. But sometimes... Things don't go away. Not because it was his fault. It's more of it was the damn company fault. <laughs> like, what the fuck, bruh? <laughs> but anyways, I just want to say that um, bottom line, everybody help each other out. We want to make each other better. And we want to become a giant community. <sighs> Motherfucking 2K. This is the reason why I'm probably not going to buy the game. Well, that's kind of dumb, but again, I just feel like Motherfucking 2K is just retarded sometimes. They are being retarded. What do you mean? What what do you mean that two kids being retarded? Why would you take away create a championship and keep create money in the bank? Briefcase. Of all things you could have sacrificed, you could sacrifice create a money in the bank briefcase and people will understand, but take away create a championship? Are you fucking kidding me? Cause that is so dumb. Like that really made me mad. Like I'm like I'm just like you. You took away create a championship, and then you're gonna keep create a money in the bank briefcase and shit. Like what? That is so mind boggling. Like confusing, and downright dumb. B. Like. You could have kept it, but no. You want to take it away and make everybody miserable. And then you have the audacity to say, oh, but we're going to patch up the game and we're going to bring back Create Championship in a patch. That's... The problem with that is that it's the timing. Not saying that the timing of taking away Create Championship is bad. It's still fucking terrible. But take but patching up a game takes time. So we are so especially with promotions, e feds, universe modes. We we want our own title. We don't want to use these stupid ass 
copy paste championships. The WWE championships look exactly like ugh. the only. If I was a promotion, the only title I'll probably use is the WCW title, not the big gold one, but the other one. The only reason why is because too many people is using the big gold title belt, so meh. But that's besides the point. <laughs> What I'm trying to say is that if you're like that's bad game, like that's bad game development right there. Like take away the most, like you and you didn't, and if you would have said it earlier instead of me instead of a video being posted out saying that create championship it has been removed. If you would have said it, we would have respect you. But this time, fuck you. <laughs> it's like I want. Ugh, I, I I'm I'll be honest with you. I do want to buy the game. I I do want to buy the game. Only only to join Efez or uh, uh, shit. I might do some indie shows, but same time, I probably might buy the game. But I'm going to get it pre-owned. <laughs> I'm gonna wait a few while, wait a few weeks for the day one patches to be done. All this and that. I'm not gonna pre-order the game. I don't care about the fiend for a fucking video game. All I want is a community. All I want is to create my car, create my character, Tasmania, and uh, maybe some other characters. Maybe I might make Kano again. Because Kano was left out of 2K19. I think in 2K18. I don't remember. Kano was Kano was originally a um 2K call. Then I transferred over to Fire Pro. But that's besides the point, my but that's but, but I'm just so I, I'm I was frustrated all yesterday about that. Well not all yesterday because I was Frustrated by everything else, but come on, come on, two K, you can do better than that. I think. I'm just like, God damn it, man! You took away the, one of the best creations, all best creation like modes. Like what? I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. The best creation game mode in the game. Create a championship next to well, to number one is create a superstar. Or create a call, create a wrestler. That's the best one. But create a championship is the second best because you because you get to create your own championship and defend it in the e fits or universe mode or exhibition. I guess the only reason why people play the game is because of making their own universe, making their own e fits and shit. But anyways, let's move on. We now instead now since we're done talking about the damn EFIT community, <laughs> let's continue to talk about the EFIT community. <laughs> well, let's well instead of talking about the damn games, just well before we before we move on to the EFIT community, Action Arcade Wrestling Chikara has been released today. I'm buying the game maybe tomorrow. I need to check. I, I I need to get my money together. Get a fucking Steam gift card or a gift card from Seven Eleven. Bring it back home and buy Chikara. Because that's one of the games I love. Action Arcade Wrestling. I really do love the games. I play one and I play two. This is my next one. I'm going to play. And maybe, and if I like it, I might do something with it. Like, that's that's if I like it. Because, the only reason why I say if, because sometimes when you get big deals for big companies, you might play the game for a few while, then stop playing it for like a break. I might get back into Wrestling Revolution 3D. I don't know about that. I, I might get back to that. And then I might get back into the Aki games again. Because I haven't played Aki for a while right now. But I love wrestling games. I really do love wrestling games. It's like the best. So I'm going to play Chikara 
We're going to buy Chikara. And fuck me sideways. Call me Becky. I'm going to get Chikara. God dang it, you damn helicopters. But anyways, let's talk about the EFA community. EFA weekly schedules and pay-per-views. I got something to say about that too. When it comes down, I'm not t- I'm not going to give you a guide how to create an EFA cuz that's not my thing. I just talk about my suggestions and my point of view. If you going to make a weekly dosage of efeds, I recommend you, depending on the game, depending on the game, or if you want to type the shit out, you're a psychopath if you do that. Hold on. Got to get my PlayStation remote because I'm on my PlayStation and I'm watching and I'm getting CR a view because his stuff be on point. But if you ever make an EFED, right? Get the official CR5 Pro shoes, please. Good shit. Comfortable as hell. Still need some work. <laughs> but, but if you ever make an E fit, right? And you have a certain game, right? I recommend you for Fire Pro, a weekly show can be an hour. I'm going to be lenient. We're well, not lenient. I'm going to be. I'm going to be, like, just a bit stretching out a little bit. But but the thing is, it's like, when it comes to Fire Pro, Fire Pro matches be, like, a snap. They'll be on, and then they'll be done. So... Damn these helicopters again. Oh, dang. Eric Bischoff just left WWE. He hasn't been there for a year yet. But I just feel like when it comes to, to Fire Pro, an hour or, or 30 minutes. That's all I'm going to say. An hour or 30 minute show. Because matches be fast and you need to tell a story. So that's why I said hour or 30 minutes. Hour or 30 minutes. Not hour or 30 minutes. Hour or 30 minutes. For fucking 2K. Kind of the same thing, but more like hour 30. Or because I've seen a EFA WCC World Championship call. Good as 2K fed. Their shows be like 30 minutes. And they tell the whole story. So, making it an hour and or 30 minutes, that's fine with me. If you want more matches, like five matches, an hour and 30 minutes doesn't really hurt. But making one episode two hours long, you are fucking mental. (laughs) Well, okay, before I continue... When I call people mental, I mean it as a joke. Like, not as, like, they're crazy or anything. They can be crazy all they want with their shows. Like, go ham, man. Like, go, like, like fuck, man. Go all out, B. But you got to understand. You need to entertain the fans. EFETS is all about entertaining your audience. It's an electronic fed. I'm like when I'm talking about e feds, I'm mostly talking about video game e feds because because I have to have I have no experience over um over no board e feds, not yet. I might get into that later, but at the end of the day, I just want to like 
talk to y'all about my point of views about some efids. Some efids are fun. Some efids are boring. And some efids are fucking like what? Like you can't even comprehend everything that is going on because it's so damn like what the fuck. You can have a comedy fit. You can have a serious fit. Even though most fits are mostly serious and have some comedy to it because they got to be lighthearted sometimes. They can't be dark and gritty. But at the end of the day, just, just do you. I'm not going to tell you how to run a fucking e-fit. If you want to know how to run an e-fit, you can ask me, but I won't give you the best response because I'm not that type of person. That's just my point of view. I see feds this way. I see feds that way. Shit. I took the time out. I'm not going to sound like a dickhead. I might sound like a dickhead saying this. But I took the time out to watch Pat Nudes Wrestling. I didn't catch the whole episode. But I just catch some of it. I'm just like... I'm not surprised. It's a comedy fed. It's, it's nothing serious. So I, I have to watch. So I watched a few, a few minutes of it, till it till it till it's over. Till I can watch HTW. Pat News Wrestling is a comedy fed. I'm gonna sound like Jim Cornette for a while. It's a mud show show. It's an outlaw mud show show. It's an outlaw mud show. Not not show show. It's an outlaw mud show. Comedy fed, nothing serious. So, if you want to be entertained, you can watch that show. I do really, I really did not sound like Jimmy Cornette because usually he will bury the shit out of this show, but I'm not gonna bury it. That's not my thing. I don't bury shows. Anyways, um. What else? Gimmick pay-per-views. Oh, yeah. I forgot to talk about pay-per-views. For pay-per-views, right? I could... For 2K, I could deal with two hours for pay-per-view. Okay? I could deal with two hours. I need to find time for it first. And I am and I need to be into it. For example, FAM, five fucking hours or three fucking hours of pay-per-view because most of the time it's like loading up the damn show. like Like a time limit. But three hours, two hours, one hour, I can fuck with you. I can fuck with you for the one hour pay per view. Two hours, we can. We need to talk about it. I. It has to be invent. It has to be inventful. Three hours, I'm gonna fight you. <laughs> but for real, for real, it's like I feel like for for, for pay per views. It has to blow off, blow off a lot of feuds, blow off a lot of things. I don't believe in B show pay per views. I don't believe in A show pay per views. I believe in big four or big one or big two or big three or just a big event in general. And the rest pay per views is just like pay per views. But. When it comes down to those type of things, they need to at least blow off or start a feud. To book a pay-per-view, you need to book your weekly shows right. You can't have impromptu matches. You don't be like me for my first event. Have four matches confirmed and have one impromptu match. That will mean something. At the end of like at the end of the day, you if you book your show right, then your pay per view is gonna be it's gonna be dope. If you don't book your show right, I don't know about your pay per view, man. The only time you can have impromptu matches is if they're like number one contender matches or rank matches. Everything else, I don't fucking know, man. 
Like, I don't know, man. You got to get your peer review right, man. Like, I'll be honest with you. When I was thinking about booking Pro Wrestling Vendetta, another show that I'm that I'm trying to start doing, I haven't recorded anything yet. I'm going to record something. Probably after school or something. But when I try to re- when I try to book person Fendetta, I I have to book something right, cause I want to make the schedule not weekly, probably monthly, or probably biweekly, or something. But at the end of the day, I just want to book something. Uh what is what else? Gimmick pay per views, all right. I'm not a big fan of gimmick pay per views, but sometimes they help you. Like if you named your pay per view Cage, I expecting all matches to be inside of a cage, and then then all of a sudden you see one match inside of a cage, you'd be like, God damn it! The rest of the matches outside the cage, but one match inside of a cage. You'd be like, What the fuck is the point calling a cage? <laughs> a no DQ pay per view. Extreme rules, for example, WWE Extreme Rules. Not all matches are Extreme Rules, but your but your event name is Extreme Rules. You need to go to jail for that, because <laughs> you literally just cl- clickbaited and um trolled everybody with that damn name. Elimination Chamber. I could accept. I could. I could accept that because it's a because. Why would you have all your matches a six man Elimination Chamber match? At least make the match long or some shit. But I, I can I can accept that. Hell in a cell. Well, make sure all beefs beefs and not just feuds. Anyways, gimmick pay per views. I'm not a big fan of it. But at the same time, it's like I will accept some pay per views that are gimmicked. But at the same time, I wish, you know, they mean something. Like, I was recommended a gimmick pay per view <clears throat> by a good friend. And I'm considering doing it for NAW. That's but it's not gonna be this year. It's gonna be probably next year. I'm gonna do it, and I want to do a um, New Year's pay per view soon. So yeah, so my schedule is gonna be all over the place. So get ready for that, big fella. Get ready for that. But gimmick peer reviews, but at the same time, I don't know what to say about gimmick peer reviews other than they just gimmicks. Speaking of gimmicks, a gimmick, a character, something that defies you. You could be a psychopath, you could be a monster, you could be this, you could be that. At the end of the day, that's your gimmick. You ain't got to roll with it. I feel like when it comes down to gimmicks or characters, they have to be a representation of you or something you're really interested in. Like a vampire gimmick or a um, psychopath gimmick or you have your inner demons. But gimmicks supposed to be representation It's supposed to be a representation of you. So, forcing a gimmick upon somebody else is not what I think should happen. Because if you if you force somebody to play this role, and they don't like it, then they just won't be one hundred percent with it. So, I don't like. When gimmicks are forced upon a character or a wrestler, 
but they're supposed to representation of you, not of who you are, not of your culture or anything, or one of them stereotypical gimmicks. I don't like that shit, man. I want to, like, when I book my wrestlers to have a certain character, they are a representation of that character, not of who they ain't, but who they are as a person. But if they want to play a certain character, they can play a certain character. And then repackage that person to be a different character. That's kind of tricky because they're the same person, but they're just different. And you, and you don't know how to use that as use it the right way. Like like I could repackage Kano to be a to be from a psychopath to an all star dancer, and that won't work right because out because Kano's not a dancer. He's a fucking psychopath. Or I could repackage Brandon Sharp from a um from the King of the World gimmick or a King of the or King of His World gimmick. Which is which is um whatchamacallit? Not not orthodox. But more like a um cocky bastard to a artist. And that would not work right because he's not an artist. He's a fucking cocky, egotistical wrestler. That 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 is, that is in between heel and face because people like him and people just don't like him because they want to make fun of him. Anyways, I just want to say about gimmicks: do them right, do them good. Make sure you know that character really well, and make sure it fits with that character very well. Not every gimmick has to be over. Not gimmick. Not every gimmick has to be over the top. They just have to mean something. They just have to mean mean and represent a certain person. Not about something stupid or something retarded or something like fucking ratchet or some shit. They don't have to be stereotypical. They they have they, they have to mean something. If he's supposed to be a perv, we we gonna fight. <laughs> but but in all seriousness though, I just want a gimmick a certain gimmicks to be meaningful, not shitty. Next topic. Edgy storylines. Storylines can be anything. But edgy storylines, they have to have a certain limit. Like, you don't have to be too edgy about, oh, she raped her, then all of a sudden, we've wrestling. That does, that's, that does not make any fucking sense. You will kill somebody if somebody rapes somebody. You will not wrestle them and do one, two, three, and, or some shit. Unless unless you're doing a death match. But that's not realistic. We will fight and we'll and I will kill you. I'll make sure you're not breathing no more. The fuck? Sorry, sorry for anybody who you know, I don't wanna talk about that shit no more. But like edgy storylines, right? They have they have a limit. Then it's not about no limit storylines. Cause edgy, cause every storyline has a limit, and you got to make it realistic. Like you can't make things like, like the fucking fucking the dead corpse WWE type shit. Like that's fucking retarded, and that's not realistic. Even though some people do fuck corpses and shit, they they need to they they, they need to get put on a shirt, which means they need to get killed. But like um. But like edgy storylines has has limits. Like if you have a storyline that has no fucking limits, and you broke the boundaries of of fucking reality, you need to be put on a shirt. You need to be motherfucking um. You like for real, for real, 
You need to think about everything about your life. If your storyline doesn't mean doesn't ha- doesn't have any t- any source of reality, you need to get you need to be evaluated for mental disorder. That was terrible. What I just said. You need to be evaluated for a reality check. Let me put it that way. Stuff just come out. Why are everything coming out my fucking mouth right now, bro? I need to shut up sometimes. But if your storyline doesn't... But it's like saying... Like, we live in a world where reality doesn't even exist because we got a damn fruit for our president. We want to talk about that after all the EFA shit because I need to talk about that shit ASAP. But, like... When it comes down to storylines... You need to know the you, you need to know the limits, what to pass, what limit is acceptable to pass, what limit it, what limit is not acceptable to pass, and what shit needs to make sense. Cause at the end of the day, this is a storyline. A storyline has to make sense. And you need to make sure the booking makes sense. For that edgy storyline. Next topic. Factions. Oh lordy. Factions are fun to book. But factions are fucking difficult to book. Because if you want to make a dominating faction. You got to book them like they're dominating. And they get, and when, especially in. Like, I'm not talking about just in Fire Pro. I'm not talking about just in Fire Pro. I'm li- okay, let me make this clear. When I talk about every EFED stuff, I'm not talking about just in Fire Pro. I'm talking about in all feds, such as 2K, SmackDown vs. Raw. Because <laughs> people still play... Because people... People still... Do, people still play SmackDown vs. Raw. You will not believe it. Fire Pro, Action Arcade Wrestling, or any other fucking game. Wrestling game out there. Or boards. But you, but when it comes to factions, make them look dominating, okay? Then, after you make them look dominating, book them correctly, okay? All right, book them correctly, and make sense with the damn factions. You can't just have factions of, of people who who hate each other guts. You gotta have factions that, that they at least like each other. They at least want to make each other better. And they at least have a common goal. If you book something like the Nexus and f- book it like the Nexus in WWE, you're going to fail. If you book in if you book in a faction like the Nexus with a with the, with the next generation rising. I'm talking to you, CWF, because I know one day you're going to do that storyline. The, the Valor, Ring of Valor is going to invade C- CWF, and then Ring of Valor is going to get destroyed the first pay-per-view they be in, and then they're going to try to do it again, and all that bullshit. Don't book it like that, CWF. <laughs> Cause I know you're gonna do some shit like that, and and I'm trying to help. And, and <laughs> I'm just making fun of you, all right. I'm just making fun of you because some of your storylines be wacky as hell, and I like it because it's just enjoyable. But if you book a Nexus, okay, I'm I'm, I'm using the Nexus as an example. If you book in like a Nexus storyline. You know, you know the, the the new generation rising up to the tops, trying to take trying to take over the, the old generation. Then let them win. The the first faction war, let them win. To to solidify their dominance. Cause this must be a dominating faction, right? Make them dominating. By like make them dominating, all right. That's how you're supposed to book a damn rising faction. Make them the shit. 
Because they are the shit. They are a dominating force. And they are more... Ex- and even though they're not that, that experienced, they are more athletic. If you want to book a dark storyline, like like the Dark Alliance from CWF or some or reality from CR Fire Pro, make sure they win a lot. Like if they don't win, and they talk all this big game with the big promos. And they're becoming all emo and all dark and shit. Make sure they win. Because you don't want them to be like a Bray Wyatt. Make them like Undertaker. Or the the Ministry of Darkness. Even though I haven't seen that storyline. Even though I haven't really seen that storyline a lot. I just heard about them. But make them like a dominating force in all of pro wrestling. Just because it's a gaming fair doesn't mean you don't doesn't mean you have to be gamey. You could be you could be real with it. I just want you to do this wisely. I'm doing this podcast to give you my point of view so you could take things into into consideration. Don't take things as as I am the as I am the Lord and Savior of the damn efeds. I don't know shit. I'm I'm st- I'm still don't know about like other type of efeds. So let's talk about divisions. Divisions are something to keep in order of. Of wrestling, right? Like weight classes or gender or anything. I feel like when it comes down to divisions, you need to keep things in order. When I think about wrestling t- t- divisions, I'm thinking about mid card, main eventer. Hell, cruiserweights, lightweights, or anything. That's what I'm thinking about. So when it comes down, to, so when it comes down to divisions, it's supposed to equal out everything. Not everybody's a main eventer. Not everybody's a heavyweight. Not everybody's a woman. So we so we use divisions to keep things in order. Hell, not everybody's a main eventer. I don't know if I said that already. So we use divisions or classes to keep things in order. But sometimes division has a cost. What I mean? Too many fucking belts that means worth jack shit. That ain't worth jack shit. So, um, let's just keep in hope that when it comes down to divisions, you know what you're doing, you know what you're equaling up to. Because think of it like pie, like a piece of pizza or, or a piece of pie. You got a whole pie that's 100%. Every, every piece of that pie equals up to a certain percentage of your roster. The one percent, the one hundred percent, is all is all your roster. Let's break it up into three parts. The main, the main big part of the fucking roster. Matter of fact, no, thirty percent of your roster is men. Thirty percent of your roster is tag teams. Thirty percent of your roster is women. That's a, that equals up to ninety percent. The other ten percent is your management. <laughs> I'm just I don't know about the 30% part but 33% is your fucking men 33% is your tag teams 33% is your women that's 99.99999% of your fucking roster left what does this mean about the other percent 
fuck it. We we rounded up to 100%, all right? That's how much, that's how you do divisions. Or you want to do it like this. Um, 60% is men. 20% is women. And 20% is mid-card or tag teams. No, 10, no. 60% is men. No. 60% is mid card. 20% is your women's. 10% is your main awareness and 10% is your tag teams. That that goes up to 100%. Or you can put or you put 60% of of your people as men, the 20 women, 20 tag teams. And they got 100%. You know, it it's all has to equal up to 100% of your roster. That's how I see things. Because if you want your roster to be, like, dominating and to mean, and, and to mean shit about your championships, which we're going to talk to by another episode, championships, because I don't have the voice right now, and, and I got to finish my homework, then you can do whatever you want with your fucking divisions. Just make sure they mean shit. And from what I learned, not all championship, not all main event titles need to be in the main event. That's what I learned. A world title can be main event, but hell, what about a secondary championship main event in the show? Or a women's title main event in the show? They ain't got to wear that. They ain't got something to do. Something to be happy about. Anyways, I'm losing my mind right now. I was going to talk about the damn presidency because I have a lot of shit to say about that. But I might but I might but I might not do this in this episode. I might do this in another episode. So, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening to Point of View, this weird ass episode I have. And um I hope to do another version of it or another episode of it probably tomorrow or um Thursday or Friday, depending on if I'm free. And I would love to have somebody on on this show. I thought I heard the door. I would love to have somebody on this show to, you know, just talk about wrestling, EFES, and give their point of view about some things. So if you want to be on this show, comment below and we can make an arrangement. Maybe you can record an episode and, you know, post it up the same day. This has been Mal. And I'll see you guys next time. That was my point of view about everything. So, see you guys next time. Ciao!